I'd like to welcome again the wonderful Jackie Lewis. <laughs> Nice every day when I came to work if my employees actually stood up and shook for Jackie. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't happen. It doesn't, it doesn't, it happen. doesn't happen. So how's everybody today? Yes. Where are y'all from? Canada. New York. Spain. Chicago. The universe. Montreal. 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 London. Yay. Montreal, Morocco. Montreal. Geneva. Geneva. Wow, how fun. Okay. Big Who speaks mix. two languages here? That's fantastic. Tell me some of the French, Spanish, Spanish. Spanish. English, French, English, French, Italian. 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 Russian. Russian. Arabic. Wow. Arabic. Wow. That's a, Arabic. Arabic as well. Irish. 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 Portuguese. 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 Ben. To the bank. That's where it ends. Yeah. yeah, very good. I speak French and English and one word in every other language almost. <laughs> Italian. Italian. Creole. <gasps> Creole. Wow. 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 That's Russian. Russian. Who's the Russian? Romanian. Russian. Wow. Everything. You know, the, the market is absolutely um, flooded with opportunities if you speak another language. I have a client... I'll just say this quickly. Um, <clears throat> he's Croat Albanian. And for some reason, I decided he spoke Russian. And he booked five jobs speaking Russian. And finally, the other day, he called me and he said, You know, I really don't speak Russian. I said, Well, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Lorre um, had him on hold for the. You guys have seen the Kaminsky method. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, it's yes. great. And. He, they said to me, oh, we can't use him because we're cutting the scene out. But Chuck wrote him into Mom. So he's working this week oh. on Mom. Oh. Yeah. That's so brilliant. Our, her name, his name is Arbet Met Medi. But he, I just said, well, you better learn Russian. No, okay. <laughs> he said he, what he does is when he gets the script that we sent him, he works with a Russian coach. Nice. Okay. So I... When they say you have to speak fluent Russian, they don't really mean that. Because as a co-star, you're not going to say more than 10 to 20 lines. And anyone can learn 10 to 20 lines in another language. So yeah. I just thought that was interesting. So there is a lot of opportunity. Now, one last question. Who here today is going to end up moving to Los Angeles? I, I moved here. Really? Here. On, I you live here. I moved here. It's just that I'm doing a production in Madrid Samba. Oh, okay. So, okay, got it. Okay, you're moving. Oh, we have a lot of movers. We have a lot of movers. Wow. You live here. A few. Who lives here? Okay. 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 Good. Okay. Okay. You okay. can get here fast. All right. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got a lot of questions for Yes. Yeah, so um, for those of you who don't know, Jackie Lewis is obviously an agent, and it's uh, you're the president, right, of LB. The president and owner. <laughs> the owner. <laughs> the owner. Was that your British? I love it. This is my, well, I'm actually, you know, I'm half British. I didn't I'm, know that. My dad's from Leeds. Really? Oh, my yeah. God. So I, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, With his amazing. act. I mean, he's been here. 60 years, but he still, you know, very much speaks in, I very am in tune with my English roots. I finally went to Leeds, actually, oh. recently. Loved it. It was great. Yes. So, yes, so you're, um, so you're the owner and the president of LB El Presidente, Talent. yes. And you're a very well-respected agent. Thank you. Yes, I am. Also a big friend of the studio, has yes. been for many years. Oh, so. 30, Bernard and yeah. I Bernardo. 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 Is he Bernardo? Bernie. He's Bernie. To well, do you guys want to hear a really funny story? Yes. After having a best friend <laughs> named Bernardo for 30 years, when I got divorced, who, who, what do you think my boyfriend's name is? Bernardo. Of course. Bernardo. But they call him Bernard. Yeah. And on Valentine's Day, Bernardo is sending me darling little love text, and I'm sending him back thinking this is my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm looking and go, thank God I said nothing oh, inappropriate. Nothing. I'm like, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, But what's the likelihood of that happening with that name? <laughs> but now, but he's Bernardo, and my guy's Bernard. Bernard. But in Spanish, they call him Bernardo. Bernardo. Funny, that's a funny, funny story. I love that. Yeah. So how did you get started as an agent? 
Well, once upon a time, um, I was very, very attracted to the arts. And in, I don't want to tell you what year, but I saw my first Broadway show. It was Shenandoah with John Cullum. And I knew that day that I somehow was going to be involved in this. Um, I didn't know where I was going to land, but when I started auditioning for musical theater and they said, go to the left, I would go to the right because I'm a lefty and I don't see things and dancing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so um, I said, okay, that's not going to happen. Um, after graduating college, I ended up working in an advertising agency and the casting office was right there. And I found where, it, I always believe like God kind of guides you to the, in the right direction, but I wasn't in the casting office. I was typing contracts all day. Not only do I not sing and dance, I don't type. So like I always was like, <laughs> and this was before computers. So six months into that journey, my friend said, you really, know, you really need to be a talent agent. And I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds fun. And that's what I've been doing. Wow. I started as an, a receptionist and an assistant, an agent, and then the head of the department. And then 10 years ago, I opened my own company. And the reason why I started my own company, um, I never really wanted to do the, that. That wasn't my end game. Um, but my end game was wanting to represent actors who I believed in. And when you work at bigger companies, you're a part of a team or you're part of the pie. And I found like really interesting actors who I wanted to represent that were far superior than the ones they had were getting represented. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to do that. It felt inor not organic to me. So I am very blessed with the luck that I get to pick whoever I want. That being said, um, because there's quite a few of you here who I know are so talented, my job is like, okay, you know you see a puzzle and each one of the puzzle pieces fit in? So my talent agency has to reflect the sign of the times, okay? Right now, the sign of the times, and I love seeing we have multi-ethnic people here. Yeah. It's, and I hate to say this as a white girl, it's not a white world on TV and film right now. All you have to do is turn it on. Most commercials, they do not have two white, a white couple. They have a black, an African American, and an Asian. Nothing wrong with that, okay? But it's my job to make sure my list reflects what people need. If not, it's like opening a store um, that just sells cranberries all year round, you're not going to make a living. So I gravitate now to, to finding the most interesting <coughs> actors who are a little bit either left of center or not a white 28-year-old guy that doesn't have credits because I can't do anything for them. And that's the hard part about my job is having to say no, mm. although I have the dubious luxury of representing anyone I want, I have to make sure that I can get this person out and get them auditions and they can make a living. If not, we're kind of, well, what's the point? Mm -hmm. There's no point to this. Yeah. Um, there's more television than there's ever been, and there's more competition than there's ever been. Everybody wants to be on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dennis Quaid is doing a TV show. Chris Pine is doing... I mean, everybody's doing a TV show. Because if you watch the movies, there's so many... Um, the black, you know, those action... I don't, I've, ne I've never seen one, a superhero movie. Oh, yeah. Thank you, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you either have that or these independent films... And it used to be that they would produce, like Disney would produce 30 films a year. I think they're down to 10. So what's happened is all the movie people have moved over to television. But there's so much opportunity now, more than I've ever, ever seen. And I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah, a lot more people are getting involved in making their own, so it, it is possible. Oh, absolutely. Jennifer Aniston, um, mm -hmm. who isn't making tel doing TV now, in different capacities, a lot of people like Alan Arkin, I represent his son, and Alan's a, a dear friend of mine. Um, he went 
into TV. He's never done a TV show. And the funny story about him is that they keep wanting to produce more and more episodes of this show. He said, Jackie, I'm 84. How many? I could barely get through one day on the set, let alone 12 episodes. So they're wanting to do more and more. It's like, no, I'm only going to do eight episodes. Um, They're paying him a ridiculous amount of money because he's Alan Arkin. Mm -hmm. And they're paying Michael Douglas a ridiculous amount of money. Um, But that show is truly, truly brilliant. You know. So with all the experience you have now and obviously mm-hmm. developing a lot of actors mm-hmm. that have become successful, mm-hmm. what three pieces of advice would you give to our actors oh. to do that they're, that a lot of actors <laughs> don't do? <laughs> Only three? Well, okay, you can give five. But really just, just let, let's say the top ones, the ones that really just scream out at you. The okay. actors are really just okay. not this doing. Is, this is the most important thing. Please write this down and please embrace this, okay? When you come to L.A. or live in L.A. or are thinking of it, you have to be studying as an actor like you were studying to be an Olympic swimmer. Whatever. And what would you do if you were an Olympic swimmer? Swimming every day. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Do you know how many people come in my office? And I said, well, tell me about your training. I'm not training now. I'm like, oh, no. I can't. I don't care if you have a resume like that. You have to be studying, studying, studying. One of my friends, her mother started the actor studio with um, Walter Matthau. Uh, uh, why can't I think of his <laughs> name? He was in, um, not Humphrey Bogart. Uh, he was so beautiful. No, gosh, when you see a guy... Go- it was in uh, Guys and Dolls. Oh, um, he played Guy Latham. Um, yes. Uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, the, the Marlon Brando. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and do you know that she, at 90, because she lived to 93, would go to the actor's studio at least three times a week? This is a woman who studied her whole life. You never stop studying. Mm-hmm. I don't care how good you are because Mm, you think you're good, there's someone right behind you who's going to be better. Mm. And what that means is that when you're so well trained, that means nothing, uh, being unflappable. That's the word. Does everyone know what unflappable means? Unflappable means that no matter what, if you're working with Steven Spielberg and he gives you 10 different directions, you're just the sponge, you're eating it up, you get it. He doesn't have to tell you the same thing twice. Yeah. That's unflappability. And I don't find people... In New York, I feel it's much more the norm mm. that even yeah. it, if you're working, because you're doing yeah. theater. And I remember I had a lot of people, friends who were on soaps. They say, I do the soap opera so I could afford to do my theater in the evening. Mm. People out here think, I'll take a class once a week and that'll be good enough. Yeah, it's like London. Training yeah. is training, so training, training, yeah. yes. We're That's why they're finding players. the best yeah. Australia, mm-hmm. um, <coughs> England, mm-hmm. uh, New Zealand. and Because you guys, for some reason, I think Americans think this is easy. Mm-hmm. It's one of the hardest things you're ever going to do. Yeah. And the best actor does not always get the job. Why do you think that's true? Because the personality they need. Look, personality, and sometimes you go... You have to sell their name. You have to sell yourself, right. Can you imagine if you, I sat up here and I was talking like this, <laughs> and um, I was telling you about my agency. You guys would be like, who, what? <laughs> so I kind of have to sell me, although <laughs> whenever I'm in a situation like this, because you have to believe that I believe that my product, which is my company has the best of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And that is a very important part of this. The other part, number two, because I'll try to keep this in three, people who handle rejection best get the furthest, okay? Does anyone understand what that means? Okay, someone tell me what that means to you. We get rejected uh, for for a living, because it's kind of constant rejection. Additions, right. like everything. Mm-hmm. 
A winner is someone that feels over. Right. The word no, for me, represents uh. next opportunity. No. I love that. That's good. Yeah. No is <laughs> next. Like I like that. Yeah, well, there's a no, there's a business elsewhere. Right. Yeah. Anybody else? I like the no. You is. have to fail to really succeed. Well, I don't know any actor in this town who hasn't failed time and time again and had to get back up. And I can na tell you name after name. Because we'll go, what happened to Helen Hunt? Oh, yeah, what happened to Helena? She was making a million dollars in the top, top. Yes. And yes. you're as good as where you are at that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, please embrace that. Because you, don't, you may be the best actor for the role. You're too short. You're too tall. You're too thin. You're too fat. Your eyebrows were too thick. Your eyebrows were too thin. Your eyelashes weren't thick enough. Um, I could give you, I have friends of mine who are producers. Well, why did you hire that person? I don't know. We just like that person. We, you were wearing a blue shirt. What? My wife has that hairstyle, and I'm mad at her. So much goes into it. You know, I had a client last week. Oh, this poor girl. Nine years doing this. She just did the ABC showcase, the diversity showcase. They pick about 12 to 15 people out of thousands mm -hmm. to be in the showcase. Every producer, every writing, every casting director was in that room. So she has like the magic um, pill now. She goes and she um, screen tests for a, a series. It was mm -hmm. between her and another girl. I never in a lifetime thought she wasn't going to get it. It's for, a for a Freeform, which is a part of ABC. And they called me and they said, you know, Jackie, she was perfect. She was unflappable. Mm -hmm. They went a little quirkier. It has nothing to do uh, with her. How do I tell my client yeah. this? But you know yeah, what? She's like, don't worry, I'll get the next one. Don't mm -hmm. worry, I'll get the next one. And mm -hmm. she, not a worry about it. So please keep those two things in mind. Number three, you have, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Number <laughs> three, because so you told me. <laughs> I know, three. I'm trying to get you to. <laughs> keep it short, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> Number three. Have the best resources available to you at all times. If your agent says get new pictures from this photographer, don't go to your friend who's going to do it for free because you think you're getting a great bargain. Okay? If your agent says this isn't working, that isn't working, do what we're saying. I'm only trying to help. I can't begin to tell you how much advice I give out that never, I never get a um, return on it. Um, I have the best resources. Get, get a, if you have a manager, find the great agent. Have the best pictures. Have the best reel. Mm -hmm. Keep things current. People don't do that here. It's like, I asked you three months ago to do this. It's not done yet. You have to be willing to invest <coughs> in your work. You have to take yourself seriously. You have to find the money. You know, there are, there are plenty of survival jobs that you oh, can yes. do in order to get what you need to create your package because yes. you have to have materials. Your package materials. isn't $10,000. You, you get a great set of headshots, mm -hmm. four or $500. Yeah. You don't need to get them every six. I have a client every six months who gets new headshots. I said, you don't need them. Why do you keep getting headshots? It's a waste of your money. I like getting my, head, my headshots. Say, okay. Mm -hmm. Then I have people... You, I, well, this, you're 60 now, and this is a great picture of you in 1983, <laughs> but you don't look like that anymore. And also, the way I see, you know, part of my job is picking the picture. So not only am I an agent, but I'm an uh, art editor and a therapist and an accountant and an attorney. Um, every couple years, what we like in pictures changes. So I won't go for the typical, like, ha, ah, smiling headshot. Nobody cares. I want interesting, unique, different. Take a picture where you're not looking at the camera. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. Take a picture in black and white. Mm -hmm. Take a picture that, like, I see your soul. Um, I, unfortunately, got picked at the very, very young age of agenting to be the best picture picker. So I get pictures thrown on my, oh, Jackie, I said, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I need to, but I actually do, I actually do teach people what I like, mm -hmm. and that helps me get the appointment for you. Mm -hmm. So it's, have the best resources, mm -hmm. 
the people who are the most talented don't always get the handle rejection. And what was the last one? Study. Yes, training. training. And you training, do all training, those training. things and you're golden. Yeah, golden. Great, great. great. All right.